The Imperial Navy had a number of warships and vessels in its armada, but here are five of the coolest. The Cantwell class arrestor cruiser was a type of cruiser utilized by the Galactic Empire and manufactured by the Quad Drive Yards at the request of the Department of Imperial Justice and the Imperial Navy. It featured three powerful tractor beam projectors which used to ensnare suspect vessels and steer traffic. The three powerful disc-shaped RT-17 repulsor tractor beam emitters not only enabled the arrestor to capture and draw in other starships, but also pushed them away to an ideal distance for the arrestor's ion cannons to disable the ship's systems. The vessel was equipped with three turret-mounted twin heavy ion cannons and 12 light laser cannons. The warship also had two large docking bays, each housing a squadron of starfighters as well as shuttles, allowing the ship's stormtroopers to board a captured craft. The arrestor could either reel in or disable it with its ion cannons, keeping it at a long enough range, allowing starfighter squadrons to carve it up. Certainly an interesting looking cruiser, and we all love the scene in Andor where this was displayed, and for one Cantwell class arrestor cruiser, it would cost 2,200,000 credits. Next up is the Architens class command cruiser, otherwise known as an Imperial light cruiser. It was designed to serve a variety of roles, protecting remote Imperial assets and performing detached patrol duties in the Outer Rim territories. Acting as support in larger group battles, serving as armed transport, and as a communication ship. It featured improved speed, agility, combat ability, and power output. Armed with four turbo laser batteries, eight quad laser batteries, mounted concussion missile launchers on the port and starboard side, and it also had a tractor beam projector. And it was equipped with class 2 hyperdrives and class 12 backups. For one Arkintens class command cruiser, it would cost 5 million credits. The Imperial Gazanti class cruiser, otherwise known as the Imperial Freighter, personally this is one of my favorite ships, and it could carry up to four TIE fighters or have one of them swapped out for a TIE bomber. And it was used for patrol and surveillance operations, and it was supported with twin laser turrets and a heavy laser cannon. It had three main hyperdrives, class 3 being the primary, and then class 12 as a backup. And for one Gazanti class cruiser, it would cost 200,000 credits. The Indicator class cruiser was used to inspect vessels along the patrol routes, and the vessel had four gravity well projectors used to pull ships out of hyperspace. Those are those four bubbles that kind of give this ship its very unique look. It also had solar ionization reactors, which was a type of power generating device that functioned using hypermatter to create a miniature star inside the reactor chamber to draw energy from. Very cool. It was also equipped with a number of turbo lasers and three ion engines and four Gmon 4 ion engines for emergency use. Definitely one of the more unique looking ships in the Imperial Navy, and for one of these it would cost 175 million credits. The Gladiator class Star Destroyer served as an escort for the Republic but was repurposed to perform as an independent long range patrol vessel by the Empire. It was capable of pacifying entire star systems for as long as two years without receiving supplies, and the warship also held the capacity to perform system patrols, orbital bombardments, and escort missions. It also had the capacity to transport 1,200 soldiers or two battalions, as well as two squadrons of starfighters, which numbered 24 ships, and it also could carry five ATSTs and landing crafts and shuttles. The warship was utilized for patrolling remote star systems, where they could locate secret bases utilized by the Alliance to restore the Republic. Considered to be one of the smallest of the Star Destroyers, it was equipped with a Class 1 primary hyperdrive and a Class 8 secondary. It also had a navigation computer, a long-range sensor, and it also utilized a solar ionization reactor just like the Indicator class. Despite its size, it was very powerful, boasting 12 turret-mounted dual-light turbo blasters, in 4 turret-mounted medium laser cannons, and 10 assault concussion missile launchers, alongside with 2 starboard medium tractor beam projectors. 
This thing was a portable tank. It also looks like the Saber class tank utilized in the Republic, but this time it's in the sky. And for one of these, it would cost 34 million credits. If the Empire wanted to deploy one of each of these ships, it would cost them 216 million and 400,000 credits. And that's five of the coolest Imperial ships. Subscribe if you would like, check out beststarwarsbooks.com, and until next video, goodbye.